Our gospel reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. These words will serve as a basis of this morning's sermon. We hear. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed in the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this morning was the Gospel reading we heard from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. That is good meditation on those words. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, this gospel reading from Matthew 14, it picks up immediately where it did, where we left off last week with the feeding of the 5,000. All right, after that, Jesus knows Okay, disciples, go on ahead. We need to move on. I'm going to dismiss the crowd because, as John chapter 6 will tell you, they spend the whole next day trying to make Jesus their bread king, this king who would provide all their earthly needs. So he's trying to preempt that. Instead, he goes up to a mountainside by himself and prays. Meanwhile, his disciples are on the Sea of Galilee trying to make it to the other side. It's a jaunt of rowing about 13 miles. And it's been hours. They left in the early evening. It's now been six to nine hours, somewhere in that fourth watch, somewhere in the very early hours in the morning. Uh, and they have not made it to the other side. These are experienced seamen. These are fishermen. This was their trade. They knew these waters. They knew this sea. But yet the wind and the waves were so strong that despite hours of rowing, they still haven't made it to the other side. So tired, exhausted, just hoping to get to where they're going, then it is, right about three, four, five in the morning or so, they see a figure on the water, not floating, not swimming, not wading, walking walking on the water towards them. And you can imagine, if you have gone without sleep, it's been a long day, you're completely exhausted, you see a figure walking on the water, you're not going to be like, oh, that's a curious sight. No, you're terrified, you're afraid, because what the heck is going on here? This is not how things work. This is not normal, this is not natural. They are terrified. And Jesus knows this, and immediately, whether he heard their cries of terror or just knew what they were feeling, immediately he says, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. We don't know how all the disciples responded to that message, but we know how one did. We know how Peter did. Peter really says a statement of faith. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And the English kind of just... Uh, betrays the trust that's there. Lord, if it's you, it, it's more, Lord, you said it, it's you. So tell me to do what you're doing. Tell me to come out into the water. Tell me to do the impossible because it's you. You can do that. And Jesus, without hesitation, says, come. And then Peter takes that step out of the boat <coughs> onto the water and he walks on it. 
Peter walks on the water toward Jesus. He walks on the water until he takes his eyes off of Jesus and instead sees, I don't know what he saw. Did he see an eight-foot breaker coming right towards him, one that he knew would engulf him, throw him under the water and drown him? Did he start to feel the, the strong winds that had buffeted the, the, the boat start to slightly lift him off his feet and lose his footing? I don't know what it is that he saw, but whatever he saw, he was afraid. And all he could do was look at the thing that had scared him. And then immediately, like that, he starts to sink. Not this slow, like sinking down into, into some mud or some quicksand or something like that, but an immediate sinking, like think of plunging into the water to the point where the only thing he can say as he starts to go down, Lord, save me! Peter starts to go down because he focused on the storm. If any of us were in Peter's position, would we have done any better? If we had been out there, what would happen to us? You know, I'm not just asking, you know, while there's having an actual storm, while there's winds and waves and water coming at you, not like the people down in Texas are experiencing, not like we experienced uh, over a year ago with the wind that came here, not just talking about surviving physical storms. You don't need to be on the Sea of Galilee to know that you've gone through storms. Storms in our life come in a huge variety, all shapes and sizes. Storms of our life might be just those financial difficulties, the ones that just keep seemingly burying us back into debt over and over again, and we never know how exactly we're going to achieve what we need to, how exactly we're going to make that nest egg so we have it for retirement, how we're going to be able to pay the mortgage and the rent this month, how we're going to be able to pay the doctor bills or the utility bills or even put sometimes groceries on the table. Sometimes we look at that and we have no idea where is this going to come from. You can never get ahead, and you feel like you keep getting dragged under life, the waters of life. Or you think about your last doctor's checkup, and the news that you got that you didn't want to hear, you kind of suspected it, and the prognosis is not good. It doesn't seem like it's something you're ever going to get ahead of, something you're ever going to beat. It's just something that's going to be with you until the day you die and only get worse. As you hear that kind of prognosis, it's hard to stop yourself from slipping into a depression because you know your health will never be what it once was. And the thought of that just drags you down. Or maybe it's a, a major life change that you're facing. Maybe it's the idea of changing jobs. Maybe it's you've been fired recently. Maybe it's about I want to quit and I want to move on. Maybe it's about a job that wants you to move. And you don't know what the future holds for you. You don't know what's going to come next. And that big question mark out in your future, it's, it's overwhelming. It's scary. How do I deal with what I can't even know what's going to happen? Or you think of the storms of life, the storms that are the verbal fights that we have, the drama with family or with friends, one more argument on one more day, and you're left there hurting, wondering if this relationship will ever get repaired. These are the storms we experience, the storms we have in life. These storms come, and it's so easy just to sit and watch them 
to just stare right into the things that are happening, right into the bad things, and to focus on nothing else except the storm itself, to focus on all of the bad things, to focus on the, the problems with, with the money, to focus on the problems with your health, to focus on the drama that you have with your family, to focus on, on these impossible question mark situations that you seem to be going into because you're looking at it and you've been taught, you look at it and you watch it until you can figure it out and solve it. That's what we're supposed to do. But in the meantime, as you keep looking at that problem, it consumes us. It takes us in. It drags you down deeper and deeper into that problem until it feels like you're in some kind of chasm or cave that you can't even hope to climb out of. How do you get through that? How do you get through impossible situations? There was a, a gift given to me a number of years ago. Uh, it was a wood carving. It had a Bible in it. And then it had words on top and bottom. And it said, when all else fails, read the instructions. And I hung that in my office because it was a gift. And felt like that was a thing you do. And one day, somebody uh, put a post-it note over the word when and wrote the word before. So now it read, before all else fails, read the instructions. Before everything goes wrong, before you've exhausted all your solutions, before you have fallen into the storm and can't take your eyes off of it, go to God's word. Go to what he has to say. Shift your focus. Stop looking at the problem. And fix your eyes on the solution. Fix your eyes on Jesus. That seems so simple. Like, yeah, I, I knew that. I knew I should look to Jesus. I should look to God to be my help, my rock, my refuge, the thing that gets me out of impossible situations. I, I knew that. But yet so many times the storms in life come and they, they draw us in to the point where I feel like, yeah, you know what, if I was there, Jesus would say to me, just like he said to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? I know it's an impossible situation. I know you don't know any way out. I know you can't dig yourself out of this. I know it's impossible. But look at me. Look at what I have done. I mean, the disciples themselves just looking at what they had just seen that day before. He had just fed over 5,000 people with nothing more than two fish and five small loaves of bread. He multiplied that to so much that there were 12 basketfuls of leftovers. Then another time when they were out on, on, on the boat, this time Jesus was in the boat with them, storm came up on the Sea of Galilee as it often does. And it was getting to the point where water was rushing into the boat, where they thought they were going to drown. They ran down, wake up, Jesus. Jesus, don't you care if we drown? And Jesus just stood up, rebuked the wind and the waves. He just scolded them, told them to stop. And instantly, water was calm. The wind stopped. It died down. And then here, this night, they see Jesus walking on the water to them with a message of don't be afraid take courage it's me and then when Peter was sinking down when he had taken his eyes off of Jesus watched the wind and the waves watched the storm about to smother him and, and, and drag him under as he starts to go down immediately it says immediately Jesus reached out grabbed him and saved him and when he brought Peter into the boat the wind died down the waves stopped rocking the boat pushing it along everything was calm fix your eyes on Jesus through the storms of life. Fix your eyes on Jesus because he comes to you 
in impossible ways with the message, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Our God does the impossible. Things we could never do, he does. And on top of that, our God is a very personal God. He's not a God who just kind of sits up in his high, almighty throne room, holier than thou, like, if I feel like it, I'll pay attention to you today. Think about what he did with Peter. He didn't just command, okay, well, water, carry him back onto the boat. Water, suck him back up so that he's not drowning. Winds, carry him to safety. No, he reached out his hand and grabbed Peter. He didn't even just say there, you know, standing like at a distance, offering a hand like, oh, you need a help up, Peter? Well, yeah, take my hand. Call for help. I'll help you. No, he reached out and he grabbed Peter and drew him up. That's what our God does. He is not slow to save. He is, as his name means, the Savior. Even to reach out and grab and take us. Just like he did for Peter. So that means when we get into these impossible situations, you remember again you have a God who does the impossible and can get us through the impossible. Just remember, I know it's easy to focus on, oh, Peter, you took your eyes off the storm. Peter, you took your eyes off of Jesus and just watched the bad things. Remember that for a few moments he was walking on the water. He was doing the impossible because that's what God did for him. Jesus said, come. Your faith is well placed. Trust me. You can do the impossible. So that means when we get into those situations of life where I don't know where the retirement fund is going to come from. I don't know how that's going to end up. I don't know where I'm going to get rent or, or I don't know where I'm going to get the money to pay the mortgage or the, the utility bills or, or, or put food on the table. When, when I don't know how it is that I'm going to get through this sickness, this disease that is ravaging my body and causing me constant pain, when I don't know how I'm going to, to get through and navigate those waters of, of family strife and drama for all the fights that we have, when I don't know what the future holds for me or how I'm going to be able to take care of people, take care of myself and get to the next destination, stop looking at the problem. You fix your eyes on Jesus through the storms of life. To keep focused on Him when you see no way that you can get through this. Because He will take you through. At one day, He will calm the winds and the waves of your life again. He will reach out and grab you and pull you to safety. Because that's the God we have. So when those storms in life come up, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on, on verses like verse 27 here. To hear our Savior say to us, to say to you, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. To go back to a chapter we heard from last week, Romans chapter 8, to hear our Savior say through Paul, God works all things for our good. Then nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. To go to places like Psalm 23, to hear that no matter what I go through, even if I have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. God, you're going to see me through these. You're going to see me through these storms of life that are impossible to get through, and yet you will pull me through. You will save me. Because that's the God you are. And so we take courage as we fix our eyes on Jesus. Stop looking at the storms. Look at Jesus. He is there to save you, reaching out for you, trying to grab you and pull you up into safety. So no matter the storm, look to our Savior. Look to Jesus.
Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.